the first section on uh, school utilization. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so what I'd like to do uh, in this section is to give you a quick overview of history of MCPS, and hopefully some of that helps put things a little bit in perspective. And then we can jump into what we, where we are today in terms of MCPS today and really start to talk about utilization, diversity, and proximity. And of course, in, in the middle of all these, there'll be another sort of round of table discussions where we'd like your inputs on the issues that were raised. So, when we look at Montgomery County, what, and again, this is a district wide boundary analysis, so what we are really talking about are 208 schools. We are really talking about our 165,000 plus students. And like how these how these our sort of nexus of schools, elementary, middle, high, and special and continuing schools, how they sort of fit within the 17 cluster and two consortia. So we are really again it's a county, sort of a county-wide assessment that we are really looking at that skill. Some of the conditions that affect the MCPS today or that they are sort of trying to grapple with include overcrowding of schools, uh, include changing educational and programming needs, changing demographics, and look at sort of issues around proximity to schools. So we can, when we look at the student enrollment, we can see that MCPS has seen its fair share of population shifts. Since 1950, the school system was as, as small as 48 schools. Right? But now in 2019, we are about at 208 schools. Um, and you can see that the school infrastructure through these sort of ebbs and flows of population and demographic shifts, uh, so the school infrastructure has kept pace with these shifts in general. And if you sort of project the enrollment out to 2025, the school system will have additional four schools that will build and be open for their CIP plan or the KIP plan. <coughs> MCPS has also diversified demographically. Since 1970, you can see that there has been growth in African American population. Since the late 90s, we can see sort of a growth in Hispanic and Asian population as well. And today, MCPS really embodies and celebrates being a truly diverse student body. So, what, where, where are we today? And the way that we'll be talking about this section works. Thank you. I hope folks at the back can hear me okay? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna shout. Hello? All right. So, there you go. Hopefully that's better? Yeah. Great, love the energy. So I think what we're gonna do in this section is start to look at these three key lenses. We're gonna look at facility utilization, school diversity and proximity. Each of these sections will be exactly similar in nature in terms of the content and the structure. And we'll be talking about things like, why is it important? What do we mean by, for example, facility utilization? And then look at sort of series of data points and try and put these things in perspective. Following each of these sections, for example, in this case, facility utilization, we'll be getting into table discussions at the end of it, where again, we'll be sort of, sort of looking at the data, looking at your handbooks, and getting into some really interesting conversation around issues. So, we do want to understand facility utilization and why is it important. We want to understand the range of utilization across and within clusters, and why is it important. Well, facility utilization is important for maintaining reasonable class sizes and accommodating growth. So what is facility utilization? Well, in a nutshell, think of it as number of students, the total number of students, divided by program capacity. Or total number of students divided by the number of seats, right? So in certain cases, when we look at the data, we'll see that, for example, there might be less students than seats, in which case there is surplus, which is great, which means that those districts or those clusters are underutilized. And then there are certain clusters that are overutilized, which means that there are more students than there are seats. Right? Everybody with me so far? I hear a tentative yes. But we can go back to that definition again. But the idea is that MCPS aims that school utilization is between the range of 80 and 100%. And these methods for calculating utilization are based on national best practices and are set out in educational facility planning policy. So let's look at what this means when we start to look at a cluster-based example. 
And this, this cluster example, again, is only for illustrative purposes. The intent is not to focus on this particular cluster, but we only want to sort of use that as an example to understand what we mean by the definition of utilization. Then we can sort of move on to the regional maps of elementary schools, middle and high. Right. So, if you just try to sort of decipher what's on this slide just for a minute. You can see that the cluster average, which is highlighted in this sort of yellow, with the yellow bar, is about 105 per se. Which means, if there were 100 seats in Quinn's Orchard, there are about 105 students, right? But, if you try and sort of see the range, the range is kind of, you can see the disparities just within that range. You can see that Brown Station Elementary is at about 84%, and then there is Carson Elementary School, which is at about 129%, which means that it is overutilized. In a very fundamental level, if you can look at the map on your right-hand side of the screen, and simply kind of look at the colors, where do you see sort of the greens next to reds? Greens being sort of clusters that are within the, the, the sort of the utilization rate that we mentioned of 80 to 100 percent. Then you can look at sort of clusters that are outside that range from 100 to 120, and then there are clusters that are more than 120 percent. What's also interesting to notice in this cluster is that if you look at Jones Lane Elementary, and if you look at Marshall Elementary School, I'm gonna try and do this with the mouse, because the pointer won't really cover all the three screens. But you can see that this is Marshall Elementary School right here. And you can see that there is an island assignment, right? So there are sort of, there are kids who have to commute from this part, south of 720, all the way to sort of Marshall's Elementary School right here. Similarly, if you look at Jones Lane, you can look at how there is an island assignment and you can look at how the, the little bit, little part of John, Jones Lane Elementary School, excuse me, it's just south of 270, and how that sort of has, those, those kids have to commute right down here. So again, something for us to think about. Like what, is, what, what do we mean when we start to look at island assignments? What do we mean when we start to look at utilization and so forth? So when we kind of zoom out and start to look at utilization across all elementary schools, these are 135 elementary schools, we can see that the district-wide average is 102%, right? So 102%, which means if there were total 100 elementary school seats within Montgomery County, there are about 102 kids, right? So the problem doesn't look that bad. But when you start to sort of look at the maximums and minimums, or sort of a disparity, or the range of that, or those sort of disparity, we can see that there, are, there is a cluster with utilization rate of 201% which means there are twice the amount of students than there are seats there. And then there is a school cluster where the utilization ratio, or rate, I'm sorry, is about 62%. That means that there are 40% of the seats are just unoccupied. So what does this mean, right? And I think that's what we are here to sort of talk more about. On the map on the right-hand side of your screen, again, at the very fundamental level, just focus on the colors. Focus on where do you see grays, which are underutilized, next to reds, which are overutilized, next to dark reds, who are super overutilized, right? Dark reds being more than 120%. And again, these maps should be in your handbook as well, so you can sort of feel free to dig in there as well, but just focus on the adjacencies for a minute. What does this tell us? When we look at middle school, again, we see that the district-wide average is 97%, right? So that means if there were 100 middle school seats, there are only 97 kids. Surplus, great. But when you start to look at the range within that, we can see that the maximum value or a cluster with utilization rate of 124% really sort of outpaces the minimum value, which is there is one particular cluster with utilization rate of 67%. Again, look at the disparities. And on the map on the right hand side of the screen, you can start to look at again how these perfectly balanced clusters are next to overutilized clusters, right? Again, look at, focus on the adjacencies. And then well, why do you think that might happen? Again, these are some of the things that we do want to get into in terms of discussion, table discussion items and so forth. And lastly, when you look at high school, the, the district-wide average, excuse me, is about 103%. Again, not that bad, right? Uh, but if you start to look at maximums and minimums, you can see that there is a particular high school cluster with a utilization value of 121%. And there is one particular cluster where the value is as low as 82%. Right? 
and again, I'd like you to focus the map on your right and just try and see the adjacencies. Try and see where you see overutilized clusters next to sort of clusters within the range of sort of maybe 200%. Again, what does that tell us? So with that, we, we would like to get into table discussions, but before that, what I'd like to leave you with is this. Right now, if you look at the state of elementary school, middle school, and high schools, I'd like you to focus on these sort of numbers right here that I'm kind of covering over. You look at schools within that utilization range, the sort of the preferred utilization range, which is 8,500. You can see that right now in elementary school, 45 of them are within that range. If you project the enrollment out into the future, with the new sort of growth and sort of countywide growth and new enrollment, that sort of those number of schools increase just marginally, right? But also look at the maximum and minimum values, like the disparities still exist. I think that is something that for, for us to sort of collectively as a community that we need to focus on. Also talk about sort of middle school, right? You can see that, again, middle schools that are within the range right now, there are about 23 of them. And if you project it out, it's only about 22 of them. So we kind of lose one school right there. And again, if you look at the maximum minimum values, again, right on your screen and mouse, my mouse is kind of hovering right over there, you can see that disparities still exist. That range still exists. Some of them will still be overutilized, some of them will be underutilized. High school kind of goes through the same deal. You can look at there are 12 out of 25 schools currently that are within that optimal range of 80 to 100%. You project it out in the future, that number sort of goes down to nine schools out of 25. And again, as you can see from what's on your screen, there is a healthy sort of range there, uh, disparity in terms of utilization values. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Steve. We can take us to the table discussion. Great. Thank you, Kushan. So like I said before, um, these conversations are going to have to be relatively quick, so we make sure we get input on all three areas. So we're going to have about 12 or 13 minutes at the tables, and really looking for your feedback on what you've heard, what you see here, what you think it means for the, the county going forward. Use the maps that are in your book that that, that talk about kind of these ranges that, that uh, that Kushan has talked about, but we're looking to get feedback. You can look at your worksheet. The two questions are, what feedback do you have for us about uh, this part of the analysis on school utilization? And what else should we include in this part of the analysis? All right, so you'll have 12 or 13 minutes. This will be led by your facilitators at the table. They will capture your ideas and uh, your, the issues that you raise. And if you also want to write them down on your own worksheet, we'll, we will collect everyone who wants to leave them behind. Great, thank you. I'm looking at the middle school.